It's good to be back from my honeymoon. Priests have honeymoons too, you know. I was on an eight-day silent retreat in Chicago, just me and Jesus, lots of one-on-one time. And one of the spiritual directors for this retreat, his name is Monsignor John Essef. And he is a famous priest. He was a friend of Padre Pio and a spiritual director of Mother Teresa. And so whenever he speaks, I, I really listen. And he's 93 years old, and this man is on fire with the love of God still. It's like so good to see. And he said, today I'd like to share with all of you the first time I met Mother Teresa. And so I want to share this story with you today because it is so good. Monsignor Estef was working for the Vatican in Lebanon in 1982, and Mother Teresa arrived in Lebanon with a special purpose. She had one goal. There was a, a, a news story in which there was a group of 36 physically and mentally disabled children who had been abandoned in a children's hospital in West Beirut. Bombs had hit the hospital, and so all of the children, all of the medical staff had to flee. And West Beirut at the time had been bombed by the Israeli army for over three months under Ariel Sharon. He had this operation for uh, Galilee, in which he was trying to drive out the Palestine Liberation Organization. So West Beirut for three months had been uh, the subject of bombing. And so Mother Teresa heard in the news about these 36 children in this mental, this children's hospital, and she flew from India 4,000 kilometers to Lebanon to get these children out of West Beirut into safety. And so she's, here's this 71-year-old nun, you know, four foot nine, frail, hunched over Mother Teresa in this big conference room with military leaders, politicians, Catholic priests. And she said she demanded that she get a fleet of Red Cross trucks to go immediately the next day into West Beirut and rescue these children. And one after another, Monsignor SF recalls them giving explanations why, okay, Mother, you can't do it. Like, a priest recently tried to go into West Beirut, and he was killed. And they just, one after another, give all these explanations. And so the priest says, okay, Mother, this is just a nice idea, but we can't do it at this time. And she said, this is not an idea. This is our duty. We must get these children one by one and bring them to safety. All for Jesus, we have to risk our lives. And then the U.S. ambassador spoke up, and the U.S. ambassador said, okay, mother, it's impossible for you to cross at this time. We have to get a ceasefire for any opportunity for you to cross the border with trucks. And there's no chance we could get that for tomorrow. And then Mother Teresa told the ambassador, but I've prayed to Our Lady, and she promised that I would get a ceasefire tomorrow. So it's like, okay, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa uh, then said, I'm going to go pray. And that night, 9.30 p.m., Monsignor SF and all the Missionary of Charity nuns gathered together for prayer. They all kneeled down at 9.30 They expose the Blessed Sacrament on the altar, and usually they pray for an hour before they go to bed. So Monsignor SS kneeling there, praying with Mother Teresa, 10.30 hits, she's still there, praying, doesn't, not moving at all. 11.30, still there, 12.30, and he's thinking, okay, Mother, it's past midnight, let's go to bed, not moving. And the bomb, you can still hear the bombs. You can still hear the noise. 1.30, 2.30, 3.30. Finally, at 4.30 a.m., they pulled an all-nighter in prayer. There's silence, dead silence. 5.30, still dead silence. 6.30, still silent. 7 a.m., phone call. Mother Teresa, you've got your miracle. We have a ceasefire. You can go into West Beirut. We have red trucks, red cross trucks coming for you. 
And so Monsignor SF, this 93-year-old priest, begins to start crying as he shares how moving it was to go with Mother Teresa into West Beirut, and one by one, you can still watch it, there's actual footage online, the care and love in which each one of these sisters took these physically and mentally disabled children who were just paralyzed by fear into the Red Cross trucks, got them safely into Lebanon. So as, as Monsignor SF shared, I was like, this is a good story. And I'm just blown away at the extreme love to which Mother Teresa showed to a group of people she'd never even met before. Like, you fly from India to Lebanon, and you pull an all-nighter in prayer, and you go into this war-torn area in which you might die for 36 kids she'd never even met before. You know, she's a pretty, pretty good example of today's gospel. You know, this extreme call that Jesus says, the whole purpose of life is just to love God with everything you've got and to love your neighbor as yourself. And Mother Teresa, if there's any woman I can think of that's a pretty good example for us today of what that looks like, it's her. And so what's her secret? You know, people might ask, Mother, what's your secret? There was an interviewer, actually. He asked her after this, Mother, what's your secret? You went to these extreme measures for children you never met before. People, everyone else, the medical staff ran away. What's your secret? She said, my secret is simple. Does anyone know what's her secret? She says, my secret is prayer. For Mother Teresa, prayer was like a time to fill up her heart with the love of God. And her heart was just so full of the love of God that she couldn't help but just give it to other people. You know, I picture her heart like this big gas tank. Just picture with me, okay? And you just picture like 9.30, 9.30 when they start praying, it's act, like each hour you could just see the gas tank start to fill up. And then it's like as soon as 7 a.m. hit, it's like full gas tank. And she just like with divine fuel just zoom right into West Beirut to get those kids. And so I want to give you a, a practical way that we can all experience right now just the love of God through prayer. As I shared, picture your heart like this huge gas tank. And our hearts are made for the love of God. That's the fuel that our hearts are supposed to run on. But so often, we fill our hearts up with other stuff. What might that be? Some good pointers in which you might be able to see what you fill your heart up with are what brings you stress. What are you stressed out about right now? What are you worried about? What causes you fear? Is it still COVID? Or is it your health? Family problems? What makes you disappointed? What makes you worried? Whatever it might be, those are, you could just picture those things like in your heart, like this big gas tank. And if your heart's full of stuff that doesn't belong there, you can't, you can't run, you know? So the first aspect of prayer is to empty our heart out of everything that doesn't belong there. So just, it's simple. Jesus, I empty my heart out to you of everything that doesn't belong there. Jesus, I empty my heart out of the fear that, I'm, that you might have of, of COVID. I empty my heart out of frustration at COVID. I empty my heart out at, at the worries I have with school. I empty my heart out of the bad relationship I have with this person. You just empty your heart out of everything that doesn't belong there. Just picture one thing at a time. You gotta name it and give it over to Jesus. Allow him to empty the gas tank of your heart out, everything that doesn't belong there. 
And then after you're done emptying your heart, you say, Jesus, fill my heart with your love. Jesus, fill my heart with your love. You just keep repeating these words. Jesus, fill my heart with your love. And you can just, this is a beautiful time of prayer. After you've emptied everything out, you just ask the Lord to fill your heart with his love. And you can picture your heart just slowly fill up like a gas tank with the love of God. And then maybe you could experience the same thing. Mother Teresa, she was so full of the love of God, she just can't help but share it with other people. As we continue on with Mass, you can even do this right here, right now. As I celebrate the Liturgy of the Eucharist, that can be a great opportunity for you to just empty your heart out of everything that doesn't belong there. Just name all of those things that are weighing you down, burdening you, one thing at a time. Just, Jesus, I empty my heart out. I give it to you. It doesn't belong there. And then as you receive Holy Communion, just keep repeating the words. Jesus, fill my heart with your love. Jesus, fill my heart with your love. Jesus, fill my heart with your love. 